655. 655. Let's everyone stand together. Let's sing Sunshine in My Soul, page number 655. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in any earthly sky, for Jesus is my light. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, with a peaceful, happy moment's roll. That's page 655. A couple of people just came in. On the second verse. There is music in my soul today. A carol to my king. And Jesus listening can hear. The songs I cannot sing. Oh, there's sunshine. Blessed sunshine. moments roll when Jesus shows his smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. Look at the third verse. There's springtime in my soul. And we've had a little taste of that today, haven't we? All right? Third verse. There is springtime in my soul today. For when the Lord is near, the dove of peace sings in my Happy moments roll when Jesus shows his smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. There is gladness in my soul today. And hope and praise and love for blessings which he gives me now. got sunshine in your soul won't y'all help me a little bit by showing a little bit of enamel amen smile a little bit it's good to be here isn't it we don't have a prayer sheet the uh, copier determined to go down on us and I mean it's down so anyway we'll get it fixed he's coming tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and so anyway uh, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way if y'all got anything on your heart and mind that we need to pray about tonight you know, sometimes you go into those church services, they'll have prayer requests for an hour and pray for five minutes. Amen. We'll try not to do that tonight, but nonetheless, if you have something on your heart, we'll share it tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, your grace. I pray you'll help us tonight, be with every aspect of the service over here, be with all of the children, all the teachers in the other building. I pray you'll bless and give them wisdom. I pray you'll give the children a, a heart uh, to understand and ears to here and Lord, a choice to do what they're told, what they're hurt, what they hear tonight. Lord, if there's someone over there tonight, they do not know you as a personal Savior. I pray you'll touch them tonight. They'll trust you. Lord, same in here. If someone's here, they do not know you as their personal Savior. I pray you'll convict them of their sin and by faith they'll trust you tonight. Help us now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated and uh, we're going to go to prayer here in just a second. But uh, we're thankful we have a God that hears and answers prayer. I know all of you have been praying what's going on around the world. And it's uh, quite interesting, isn't it, what's taking place. Uh, we find out how evil these people are. And uh, we're going to continue to pray and ask God to do a miracle. Wouldn't that be something? And uh, we're praying the Lord is able. And we're asking the Lord to protect these folks and to uh, strengthen their resolve. I was encouraged today. Um, 
I was, I thought it was interesting, you know, uh, Putin had even called in a band, actually two different companies of assassins. And uh, I heard the actual Navy SEAL that killed Osama bin Laden. I, I heard him being interviewed and he talked about these Chetnins and said how evil they were and, and how uh, very skilled in their craft of, of assassinating, killing people. But we found out, I found out today that both of those groups that were sent in to Kiev, Kiev both of them were eliminated. The, the Ukrainian special forces took them out. Think of that. Two different groups of them. And uh, they were sent just into the capital city just to eliminate the president and his cabinet. So I want you to think about that. And so uh, where uh, sin doth abound, grace does that much more abound, doesn't it? So I'm thankful. So let's just keep praying and asking God to do what only he can do and strengthen the resolve of these dear people. So that's my first prayer request tonight. Let's pray for Ukraine and all the people. Uh, Brother uh, Kozachenko is... I'm now friends with him on Facebook, thanks to Brother Eric, and uh, he's putting out different things and, of course, uh, putting up sermons. They're having services still, and, and uh, of course, he's in a little eastern part of the, of the, of the country, but uh, still in harm's way. Let's just continue to pray for him and all of the Christians there uh, that God will touch them. And then I've got a few requests here. If you have some, we'll have prayer on that, but marriage retreat, pray about that. That's this weekend, starts tomorrow, all of you that... Are signed up you know the service starts at 6 30 and of course you get up there anytime you want that's up to you you have all that free time the services are start at 6 30 and, and then again on friday morning at 10 o'clock maybe 9 30 i think it's 9 30 and then uh, again friday evening at 6 30 and uh, so be right in your place and we're excited about all of that so just pray that god will work in a special way i had a call today or actually miss kyla uh, had sent me a voicemail from the church and uh, someone had called that wants to come and I spoke with them this evening. So let's remember uh, that. Then I want you to pray for Angie Rector. She did get a good report, uh, but we're going to continue to, to pray for her. Uh, also, the families for the week is Mike, Kim, Noah, Jonah, Isaac, Wood. So let's remember this family and also Brother Kavi and Miss Janie Wynn is the other family. So these are, you know, we put out two families that we pray for each week. And so I've listed them for you tonight so you can pray for them throughout the week. I just wrote down all of our shut-ins, or many of them. I hope I didn't miss any. I took them right off the prayer sheet. I want you to pray for Miss Mary McDaniel. She's been struggling with some health issues. Uh, Brother Hedrick, I spoke with him, seen him just for a minute on Monday. He was, his back was hurting him. He wasn't able to be here. Uh, we talked. He's 89. He's 89. I didn't realize that. And of course, he's a Korean veteran, Korean War veteran. And we spoke on the phone. Uh, the other day, but he just wanted me to let all of you know that he loves all of you. He prays for you often, and uh, he misses being here. Remember Miss Linda Eller, uh, Papa Bill, Brother John Talent, Miss Pat Blevins, Miss Nell Burgess, Miss Eileen Rorex. Remember the Bonines. Remember Brother Donald Tiffin. And so we just have some folks that's just not able to get out. Remember Papa Bill, and uh, we just have several that's just not able to get out right now. So let's pray for them. Yes. Did y'all hear that? Papa Bill's birthday tomorrow, so if you want to encourage him. And if you don't have his phone number, you can get it. It's back there on the new church directory, so please don't miss that as you go out, pick up a new church directory, all right? And if there needs to be any updates on that, let Miss Kyla know. Someone else have a request tonight? Yes, sir. Ron Hughes. Okay. Let's remember Ron Hughes. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Okay. And you said flow powers? Yes. Okay, flow powers. Let's remember her. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Just pray for the rest of the street. Yes. I've had 31 tonight, I was told. Yep. It's great. Appreciate all of our workers. Just remember them. And I'm just going to do this. Y'all take, how many of y'all got a pen? You're writing things down. I want you to write these boys' down, names down, all right? And I want you to write down Skylar, Alex, 
and the other young man, Ashton, and Kenneth. And uh, I met with all these boys in the office on Sunday in my church office, and it went well. I was really kind of impressed how they responded, but, you know, sometimes we just need a little bit extra prayer for some of these fellas, and, and um, you know, help them to... I'm sorry? Yes, sir. Uh, Scholar, Alex, they're brothers. Ashton, that's another brother. Three of them are brothers. And then Kenneth is their neighbor. And so this is the four, the four horsemen. <laughs> they, but I'll say this about them. Um, in the office, and you know, Brother Sam and Miss Candy's their Sunday school teacher, except Ashton's, and then um, they go to children's church, and then also they're going, they're over there tonight, I'm sure. And uh, but anyway, so just you know, we've been having a little bit there, so we pulled him in moss, and, and Brother Sam, Brother Jim was with me, and we were talking, and and I told him, I said, "You boys know we love you." They said, "Oh yes, sir, we know, we know you love us." And I said, "Well, why do you think? Why do you think? How do you know that we love you?" And he said, well, he said, y'all come and get us on the van, bring, him to ch bring us to church. So we wouldn't be able to come unless you come and got us. And so I said, well, um, the teachers have told me that you, you're kind of disrupting the class where people can't hear. And I said, you know how important it is not to misbehave in class. I said, would they, would they be wrong to think that? Or do you think they have a right to feel that way towards you? And all four of them said, they have a right. We've been misbehaving. Think of that. That's a step, isn't it? And so anyway, I hope and pray. You pray for them because we love them and uh, we've seen some strides with them and we want to continue to see them uh, continue. Because you know what? The Lord, look, if someone would have thought I'd ever be a preacher, they was crazy. I'm telling you. So how many of y'all believe God's able? Absolutely. So we just got to keep working with people and try to help them and encourage them. So I want you to pray for those four boys in a special way. All right. And uh, anybody else have something special? Yes, sir. My grandson Chase has two boys. Oh my. Yes. Let's pray for Chase. That's tough stuff. Let's pray for Chase. He's been sick. Anybody else? Anybody at all? All right. Well, I'm going to ask Brother Eddie. Brother Eddie, would you come up tonight and uh, pray with us and for us? And, and how many of y'all know that old song? Uh, oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. And uh, Tom Hayes wrote it. And I know we have that music here somewhere. I bet you, well, that's right, Miss Don. I know Miss Donna would probably know it, but um, anybody know that song, that one? Anybody? And uh, I was going to sing it for y'all tonight, but y'all better be thankful I couldn't find the words to it. Because I, I, I'm not going to only sing it, I'm going to preach it. That's going to be the message tonight, all right? How many of y'all listened to the State of the Union address last night? Did you listen to it? Well, you're going to hear another one tonight. This is Tiftonia Baptist Church State, uh, and I never forgot what it's called, and I just said it, State of the Union Address. And uh, so y'all just sit back, and I just hope y'all won't be as bored as everybody else was last night, amen? Pastor was uh, talking about this, these, these uh, boys that ride the buses, and they ride Janet's bus. But what you don't know about one of these boys, the three that are brothers, had a father that was murdered. Mm -hmm. And one of them literally witnessed the shooting. And so he's, he's a special, special boy. And Jan has been wonderful to him. But yes. they, they've been through a lot. Yes. But let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much, Lord, for this church. Lord, for the love that this church has for the ministries. Lord, with the love we have for each other. Father, we pray for the, the uh, requests that have been asked for. Please. Lord, the, uh, the, the country of Ukraine, Lord, we pray please, please, for these citizens, Lord, and these uh, 
these servicemen there, Lord, we pray, God, that you'll do a miracle. Whatever that entails, Lord, whatever you've got in store, we know it's for the best. And Lord, we just pray, God, that, that uh, you'll put an end to this madness from this tyrant, Lord. And we just pray for something special to happen in the next few days there. Lord, we pray for this, uh, this gentleman that uh, Pastor was talking about. It's, it's a now a Facebook friend of his, Lord. We, we thank you for his ministry and we pray for his safety. Lord, we just pray that you'll just take care of him and his family. We thank you for the courage he has shown through this. Lord, we pray for just here at church, Lord, these requests have been asked for. The different ones that are sick, Father, Lord, we just, the uh, young man with, with food poisoning, Lord, we pray you'll just heal him and help him to feel better. And we pray for the ones that are, that, are, that are homesick and as the ones that were discussing that just can't be here. Lord, we pray that you'll just heal them. Lord, bring them back to church. If there's every time we need church, it's now. Lord, and, and we just thank you for that. Lord, I pray for the bus ministry. Lord, I pray for, for all of them that are writing. They're just so special to, to all of us. And Lord, we pray for these four boys that, that our pastors ask prayer for. Lord, we just pray for these brothers, Lord, and just just do something wonderful in their life. They've, they've been through so much. And we just pray for... Uh, just us pray to give us a discernment and wisdom as we deal with them. Lord, we pray for this message to follow. Lord, this state of the union, as Pastor has said, Lord, we just pray, God, you'll give us open ears and open hearts to hear what he has to say. We praise you and thank you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Not to belabor the point, but I do want to say um, those boys, Ashton's one of them, and he's in Miss Donna's class, and she did tell me Sunday. And I've been noticing he has come in several Sundays and just done wonderful in our class. Settled down, doing great, and uh, uh, we praise the Lord for that. So uh, he's doing well. <laughs> Any others, too. Uh, let's be in our place for Sunday School Sunday at uh, 10 o'clock a.m. Looking forward to it. We are starting a new quarter of lessons, and so you don't want to miss that. And so we're looking forward to that here in the uh, adult classes, our relationship with others, our responsibilities. And so let's invite people. Let's do that. Our theme for the month is stand up, stand up for Jesus. And we're going to pray specifically for things each Sunday. And this Sunday, what's on our mind right now is our country and current events in Ukraine. We'll continue praying with that in mind. So remember that. There are sign-up sheets in the back. Don't forget men's prayer breakfast and also the prime timers here at lunch in there on March 14th. There's a sign-up sheet for that. So let's not forget that. Uh, this evening. And don't forget, we have still our offering plates are back there. Uh, give up your offerings as you leave tonight, if you would, please. All right, Pastor, God bless you. Praise the Lord. How many of y'all got your Bible tonight? Good. You love your Bible? We need it, don't we? And uh, would you open it to Psalm 8 tonight? Psalm 8. And uh, I want to share this, of course, a very popular little uh, song. And as I was thinking about last week or this Sunday, I preached, really, to be honest with you, uh, I'd struggled with what to bring Sunday, just with everything going on. And um, I actually labored in it, to be honest with you, I wanted to be helpful and that's the thought that God gave me to speak on liberty and freedom, thinking of what's going on. And, uh, you know, normally a pastor kind of is going somewhere. You know, they're always trying to deal with a subject or, you know, uh, maybe someone would might say trying to fix things. And, I, you know, men, most men, you, you want to fix stuff. And just the difference between sometimes a man and a woman, a woman really doesn't want something fixed. They just want you to listen to them. Am I wrong there, ladies? Y'all help me because I feel like I'm on a stranded island there. Am I wrong? Yeah, y'all like y'all like to just be heard, the talk, and you you know you might be struggling, but you might not, you might even know that there's not maybe a, a fix to it right that moment. You just want to be heard. You want someone to listen, and then us men, when we hear that, you know, we go in you know Rambo mode or fix mode, like we we try to fix it. And sometimes that's not, and I'm giving all you men some lessons here if you're taking notes. 
it's probably best not to do that. Just sometimes they just want you to listen to them, right? And, uh, but I'm, I'm saying for myself, a lot of times when I preach, I'm preaching a message that I feel like the Lord has gave me. I, I want to deal with something. I want, I'm going somewhere. You understand what I'm saying? We're going somewhere. We're going. Now, this is a message that's going somewhere, but this is kind of a situation where I just wanted to bring a message tonight. Really, this is for me. Is that all right? And you just happen to be here. And uh, so we're going somewhere, but we just have a state, a, a state of the union address tonight. And we're just going to, we're going to brag on the Lord tonight. Amen. And we're going to be thankful what we have in him. Because we need it. With every, everything going around and how people fell us, how even our own selves, we, we're disappointed in ourselves. The Lord never disappoints. And so... Psalm 8 is where I was directed. The Bible says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens... The work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And all God's people say it. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and grace. I pray now that you'll help us as we look at this powerful truth tonight. And Lord, as we just look to you, and Lord, I, I want to say as the psalmist says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. And Lord, I pray you'll help me to extol thy name tonight. I pray you'll help me to lift you up tonight as you deserve to be. And Lord, I pray no matter how we've come in this building tonight or even what's going on in our lives, maybe at home watching from the live feed, I pray that you'll help us to worship you. I pray you'll help us to lift you up. I pray that you'll help us to get our eyes on you tonight. For we ask it in the precious name of Christ. Amen. A Psalm of David. And um, some scholars, you know, I don't know what would uh, qualify somebody being a scholar. I believe we got some scholars in this building. But some scholars believe that this psalm was written when David spent many a nights out in the pastures keeping uh, watch over his father's sheep. Some scholars, and probably more than the other scholars would say, as I've read some of the views on this psalm, that they believe that this was during the time of David's great victory over Goliath. And as he pondered upon his great victory. And as I think about that, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this uh, pastor scripture out tonight. And, you know, I believe both could be true. I mean, no doubt. He defeated Goliath. He was a shepherd boy. So all of those nights, whenever he was pondering on this thing, either could be relevant. It could be before he killed Goliath, it could be afterwards. But as I thought about that, if it was after he pondered the great victory, the great miracle that God gave him over Goliath, I can't help but think I'm asking God to provide another David and Goliath event that's going on today. And I hope you are as well. Because it seems that obviously if this great country and dictator would unleash all of its fury on Ukraine. No doubt we understand that he probably could level the country. But what we are seeing is even if it up to this point lasting this long, I don't think anyone, because I, I listened to all the experts on the television, they were all saying within two or three days Ukraine would be defeated. Well, it's been much longer than that. But I say no matter whether it was the nights that he watched his sheep 
of his father's sheep and pondered upon the Lord, or even if it was after he was going back through memory lane and thinking about his great victory, it really doesn't matter when. But the greatest thing about this is that we understand also that there are, this psalm speaks of the coming Messiah and his redemptive work, but it also deals with how the Lord deals with humanity. This is a beautiful psalm. And uh, some view it in the light of God's consideration of humanity. I believe it's considered in there. I also understand that some view it solely in the prophetic light concerning Christ. But I believe it's possible to look at both views of this psalm and absolutely understand without compromising the integrity of the text to see it in both lights. Yes, I believe he's speaking of prophetic here, but I also believe that he's dealing with mankind. And so we think about this, this psalm speaks of the coming Messiah and his redemptive work, but we also see God's gracious love and his care for humanity in this psalm. And really, I just want you to, to put your eyes upon these verses tonight as we look at these nine verses, and we won't get through them all tonight. And I might finish this up on Sunday. But I want you to notice here as we look at this psalm, and here it is, how excellent is thy name. How many of you would agree that there's no name like the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. How excellent is his name. The Bible says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. No doubt about it. So let's look at this psalm. Let's look, number one, at the Lord's preeminence. Now, this is our State of the Union address for tonight. The Lord's preeminence. Our Lord, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Now, listen. Whether David was sitting there on a clear, cool night, or maybe it was a clear, warm night, watching his father's sheep, or even if it was maybe after the fact that he had defeated Goliath in that great battle, we understand one thing true about David in this passage of Scripture. No matter where he was and whenever it was, he was compelled to worship the Lord. He was compelled to worship the Lord. And I'm thankful that he also understood this. David was well aware that there was none. There was none like the God that he served. And I want to just uh, state the same fact tonight to all of you that would like to hear. I just want all of you to know tonight in this building and also in line. I want you to know tonight there, there is no one like him. No one greater. He is above his name, how excellent is his name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? So he's compelled to worship the Lord. Now, I know Kim would remember this, and I know many of y'all probably remember that song. Y'all remember that song, El Shaddai, El Shaddai? Well, all of those words of the Lord have different meanings. Now, I remember as a boy, we would go to children's camp. David Pollock would play that song. And every year I remember he would always go through the names of that song and explain them. But as a boy, no doubt, that's been many, many years ago. I, as through the years, I have to be reminded of what these names are. But as I was looking at this passage of scripture, I noticed here that David mentioned, he referred to the Lord. And he said, I, I want you to notice the distinction in the names that God mentioned here, that David mentioned. He referred to him as the Lord and our Lord. Notice capital L, capital O, capital R, capital B, and L-O-R-D, capital L. David was literally saying, oh, Jehovah Adonai. And when we think about those words, the name Jehovah is God's redemptive name. He, that's his personal name. Lord, Jehovah. But then we find the word Adonai here, and that refers to the Lord being our master and our owner. Now, this is quite significant understanding no matter whether he was pondering on a cool night or a warm night watching his father's sheep or even if he was pondering after he had defeated Goliath. The significance here is this. And the context is important in David's life at that time, but it's also important for the context of our life today. What is that? David needed his great strength and wisdom in that day. And you know what we need tonight? We need his great strength. And we need his wisdom today. I want you to know we understand. That he understood. That the Lord. He was the Lord's. He was, he was, he was the Lord's. 
thus the word Adonai. He said, Lord, you own me. You bought me with a price. And we stand on this side of Calvary and we know that the Lord bought me. And he owns me. The Bible says that I'm not my own for I've been bought with a price. Adonai. And that ought to break, bring great comfort and assurance to all of us today. When we think about this passage, we serve the same God. Aren't you glad? And I'm thankful we belong to him. And I'm thankful that he's bought us with a price by the precious blood of Christ. And his name exceeds all other names. How excellent is his name that speaks of his majesty, his greatness, his loftiness, his wonderful name. I remember one time sitting uh, in a church service when I was in Bible college and a preacher got up to preach. And he said, this was the visiting preacher and the preacher got up to preach and, and he gave this information. He said, I, I told the pastor what I was going to preach on tonight. He said, I was going to preach on the Lord Jesus tonight. And I'll never forget what he told me. The pastor said to him, to the visiting preacher, he said, make sure when you preach on his name, make sure that you preach his name worthy that it should be. Quite sobering, isn't it? The Lord Jesus Christ, why? Because of his majesty, his greatness, his loftiness, his wonderful name. So we see the Lord's preeminence here in verse 1. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. And then we see not only the Lord's, we see the Lord's power. The Lord's power. We see his preeminence. His name's above every name. We see in this passage how excellent is his name, the preeminence. In other words, his preeminence is he's, he's first. And by the way, some people have the idea when you say, well, he's preeminent. Well, like in other words, you know, he's at the top of the list. No, what that means is there is no list. He is the list. He's not just on the top of the list. He is the list. He's preeminent. Someone says that preeminent is first claim principle. I hope the Lord has first claim principle. On your life. Why? Because he, he should be. Because he's preeminent. But we see the Lord's power. Look at verse 2. The Bible says out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Now I think that interesting. Why the weak mentioned here? You would think out of the mouths of the educated and the adults. No. God says out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger? Verse 3, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained so very well, no doubt about it, probably David is sitting there either in a field watching sheep or maybe sitting uh, outside in a field after he defeated Goliath. He's looking at the creation that God has made and it takes his mind and his heart and his eyes towards the Lord. And he starts to think about his power. He thinks about his preeminence, but he thinks about his power. And by the way, by the way, at this time, David's life was full of enemies. David's life, he, he, he look, uh, as David considered his weakness. And he considered his inadequacy. He considered that he could overcome his adversities that he faced. Because he rejoiced in the power of God that he served. So he's talking about the Lord's power. What is that? Look at verse 2. Look at his conquest. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. That thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger regardless of the strength and the power of his adversities. And by the way, David had many adversities. David had many enemies. I mean... Not long after this, we believe this psalm was written early in his life, but later on in his life, we know that the very, the most powerful man in Israel hunting him down like a dog trying to kill him, King Saul, he had adversities. He had enemies, so he understood. David knew their power, but here's what he said. He, he knew that the power of his adversities, he knew the power of his enemies paled in comparison to his God. And so I say to you tonight, God was well able to overcome anything that David would face. And by the way, he did help David overcome anything that he faced. And he provided him strength to endure. 
And by the way, the weakest among men. Here, here it is. The babes and sucklings declares the power and the majesty of God. See, David could rest in the midst of adversity just knowing this simple truth. Here it is. Y'all ready? And it will help us go to sleep tonight and help us rest too if you'll get a hold of it. His God was in control. I thought I'd get a shout right there. Because you know, I, I, sometimes we look around and we see things not working out like we want them, like we are the authority on everything. No, let me remind all of you, we're not God. And God already tells us that His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. You know, how many times have we tried to help out God? And we get all up in a fluster and some of you ladies are getting ready to have a nervous breakdown just as soon as you can put it in your schedule to have it. Because you're worrying about everything. I mean, we're worrying about that supper. We're worried. I, some ladies are sitting right here. Of course, they used to. I don't know how many people do it now. But many women back when I was a boy, many of those women wasn't even listening in church because they were worried about what they had on the stove or in the crock pot getting burned. I don't think we got that problem anymore. As I say, most of us go to Cracker Barrel. Somebody say amen. <laughs> worry, worry. I, I've told you all about my grandma, Brandon. God bless her. Man, I tell you, my grandma, Brandon, was a wonderful lady. She worried about everything. I'll never forget it. We'd go up there to hunt. We love staying up on the mountain. <laughs> you know, you, you get away with stuff up on the mountain. Grandma would let you be a little mischievous up on the mountain. But I've learned something. Usually grandma and grandpa's lets them grandchildren do things that the parents won't let them do anyhow. And if you're one of them kind of grandparents, shame on you. Now, I know you're saying, well, you, no, no, we do, what the, we do what we're told. We know better, amen. But I'm just telling you right now, we'd go up grandma's and I love to go up and stay with grandma Brandon, you know. She lived up on the mountain and she always governed the heat in the house by closing doors. And, you know, you slept in that back room, and that back room never had heat in it. So when you go back into that back room, she'd slam all them hand-quilted quilts on top of you and them big blankets. And, I mean, once you got up underneath it, you was sucked in for the night. You couldn't move. Grandma would come in there every night, and she'd say, Now, she said, I, I would give y'all a kiss, but she said, I done took a cold. I said, Man, Grandma's always got a cold. And she'd always say, now, do y'all want to get up and watch the sunrise? Because, man, up on that mountain, you could see that sunrise come up so pretty. But she never woke us up to see the sunrise. But I'll tell you what I do remember. Up my grandma, I remember we'd be going out there. and We'd want to go up on the mountain or something, go up there hunting. I'd never forget grandma saying, now, y'all be careful up there now. She said, that wind get up. She said, knock a tree down and, and kill you. She said, y'all be careful going up there hunting now. Y'all be careful. Y'all watch that wind. That wind could knock a tree down, roll down. Y'all can't get out from underneath it. I'm like, man, there's trees going to fall down up here. And then there was a pond over there at my uncle's property. And it's like, you know, I always thought in my mind that pond was different than any other body of water that I ever knew because it had suck holes in it. And what I thought about that pond was, is if you, now don't y'all get over near that pond because that pond got suck holes in it. And there was somebody that drowned in a pond somewhere up on the mountain. And I had in my vision as a little boy, I thought, man, that pond's got arms. And if you get near it, it pulls you down in the water because it's got suck holes in it. She worried about everything. And some of you ladies are laughing, but y'all not might be worried about suck holes, but y'all are worried about everything else. But can I help all of you tonight? You can lay your head down at night tonight and say, you know what? My God's in control. That's what David did. He realized the conquest. His God was in control. Charles Spurgeon said this. How often will children tell us of a God whom we have forgotten? How doth their simple prattle refute those learned fools who deny the being of God. Here's what I mean by that. Isn't it, think about this, isn't it comforting to know that one doesn't have to be advanced in age or wisdom to trust the Lord? Do you know what we really need to be like? Children. Just simple, childlike faith that most of us won't do. 
We think we've grown out of that with the Lord. Oh, we know better than that now, Lord. That doesn't make sense. That's not scientifically correct. There's no way that this could happen, but it's amazing. You tell a child something, and if you've proven to them that you love them, and they have confidence in you, they'll believe you can conquer the world. And the Lord has. But so many times, the older we get, the easier for us not to trust. Just put simple, childlike faith. Because I'll say this, all of us would go to bed tonight a whole lot easier if we simply put childlike faith in Him. His conquest. See, this childlike faith brings confident assurance of God's ability to meet our needs. And keeps us according to His will. The Lord's power, His conquest, His creation. Look at verse 3. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. You know, He considered the heavens. Can I ask you all a question tonight? It was probably a starlit night. I don't know, in my mind's eyes, I think about David under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God writing and penning these words. No doubt he probably was looking at a starlit night. He's no doubt because he brought creation up, so something had brought it to his mind. And stood in wonder and amazement at the power of God in creation. Can I ask you all a question? Do you all ever just take time to do that? Can I give you all a little personal illustration that I've never forgotten? Special night. This summer, I went into West Virginia. I went in for a fishing trip. My cousin and I was standing out in the middle of the New River late at night. And on my phone, I, I have an app. And of course, it's an um, AccuWeather app. And they do pretty good on that app because it's pretty accurate. AccuWeather, hence the name. And I got all these things that day and said, tonight's going to be a special night. You're going to see more shooting stars, comets tonight. Than you ever had. Well, I didn't think a whole lot about it. But that night, my cousin and I were standing out in the middle of that river fishing. Sure enough, soon as the sun went behind the mountain and the sun and the moon began to come up, that night, he and I, in that couple of hours, two or three hours we stood out there, we seen 13 shooting stars. We seen one comet that I can't even explain to you how beautiful it was. And it was so bright and stayed illuminated in the sky for so long. And, you know, we had seen, seen shooting stars all night long. But this one was just a huge, massive a light and it just it hung there forever before it dissipated and Derek and I was just standing there and and you know what it did for us is we just stood there that because we wasn't catching a whole lot of fish somebody say man that night he did catch a 30 pound flathead that's a big flathead and that for all of y'all that's a catfish but um we just stood there and we talked about you know what, what you know what it did for us you know what it sparked we started talking about the Lord and how wonderful he was and what amazing creations. Have y'all ever just sat and just thought about the beautiful, wonderful detail, how God created everything? You ever thought about it? On a starlit night, when all is beautiful and wonderful, you look up those stars, you have to start thinking about how wonderful God is that he put all of this in existence. And that's exactly what David did. He's seen his creation. You know what it was? David puts in this passage, when I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars, which thou hast ordained. Here's what he said. He said, I'm literally amazed, Lord, considering your awesome power. What do you think about that? See, can I help everybody here? Slow down a little bit. Slow down a little bit. Take in the little things. My wife has a, had an aunt. She's in heaven now. All of you know her as Aunt Joel. She's a very simple lady. Very simple. Never had a TV in her home, to my knowledge. Cooked on an old wood cook stove for years. You go over there for Christmas. I mean, it was amazing. Our children were young. They never mind going over there, but there was no toys. There was nothing there. She lived a very simple life. 
But it was amazing. We would go and see her maybe once or twice a year. And it was amazing every year that we went. We were excited to go see Aunt Jewel because we were all sitting there captivated as this little lady spoke to all of us. And she was so captivating because the joy that come across her face as she would just so eloquently describe the smallest things of life. Like one that I'll never forget. She said one day she went up to the cemetery. And she said there was a little um, quail up there. So you don't hardly see quail anymore. But she said that little quail, you know, they, they whistle. Y'all ever heard of a Bob White quail? You know why they're called Bob White? Because they sound like they're chirping Bob White. Y'all just learned something tonight. She said that little bird whistled and she said her husband had passed away and actually they were at that cemetery that very day burying her husband that died very young and she would begin to, her tears would fill her eyes and she said I just felt like that was the Lord allowing she said because her husband and I know forgot his name Lester she said do y'all know why the Lord let me hear that Bob White quail there the day that we buried him. She said, because Lester always went around whistling like a Bob White quail. And that put the biggest smile on her face. And that kept her for years. And then we're just trying to find things to get upset over. See, we miss the little things because we think, I ain't working out like we wanted to. This ain't going on. This ain't going on. No, you're missing. Have you ever just thought about the little things of life? You ever looked at a rock formation and think, man, the God that can make that, I think he can take care of me. The God that created all those beauty of those shooting stars and that whatever that comet was called. I don't know what it was called. The one that can create that, I promise you, he can take care of us. His creation. You ever take for just ever take a moment to consider the wonder of creation? I hope you will. I hope you'll start. Have y'all noticed it feels a little spring in the air? The birds, when you're up now, you're starting to hear them a little bit. Y'all know what? That's exciting for me. I love the spring of the year. Because here pretty soon, here in probably a couple few weeks, if I get up early enough, Brother Market, I can go to a place that I'm not going to tell anybody where it's at because it's a public piece of property, but I killed a big gobbler in there last year. And you hear all those birds chirping, and about that time, just before daylight, you hear him up there on that tree, and he, he just hollers out and says, hey, girls, I'm here. He goes, gobble, 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 gobble. Of course, that was a horrible gobble. But to the hunter, and you know what you're saying? I'm going to come and, and I'm going to trick you because you're going to think I'm a girl. But when you show up, you're going to be looking for love in all the wrong places. I'm telling you, if you're a hunter, that's exciting stuff. And I'm telling you, but you know what's beautiful about being a turkey hunter in the spring woods? Because you get in the woods before daylight. And when you're sitting there and you're watching the world come to life, Amen. it's beautiful. All of the senses that you have is being intensified. Your hearing is better. Your eyesight. And then if you could smell. You could smell the smell of the woods. The little things. Oh I tell you what. Things ain't working right. Well then you need to go out in the forest at night. And just let it captivate your senses. And start getting your mind on the Lord. That created all of that. And realize he's mighty. If he can take care of all of that. He can take care of you. Why? Because of his conquer, his conquest, the Lord's power, the, the Lord's creation. And then as I close, the Lord's provision. Look at verse 4 through 8. Here David really discusses God's awareness of mankind. And he points out to the coming Christ as the Redeemer. If you'll notice in verse 4, he talks about his presence here. Here it is. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Can you believe that? That he's mindful of us? Who are we? And the son of man that thou visitest him. He'd actually visit me. 
See, David was amazed that man would even enter into the thoughts of such a powerful and divine Lord. But he did. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 4 that he created us for his own pleasure. That amazes me. I'm too amazed. <laughs> that God would care so much for me. Are y'all amazed? Oh, I know some of you, by the looks of you, are like, no, I know he cares for me. I deserve it. No, we really don't. How many of y'all feel like you're lovable every second of the day? Because if you, if you feel that way, would y'all come up here and sign my Bible? How many of y'all feel like you're lovable and you cannot believe that people don't love you? Would, would you raise your hand? Because I, I really, if you raise your hand, Brother Mark, I want you to sign my Bible. But I can already tell him he's lying right here in church. I love Brother Mark. He's got a sense of humor. Laura and him get one another. It tickles me. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed. The only one in here tonight that's not is Brother Mark. I, I, I am amazed. And I know Brother Mark. I am amazed that he cares for me like he does. Aren't y'all? Me? I'm thankful that he's aware of my needs. He cares about my needs. You know what? He cares about your needs. We're blessed beyond measure, aren't we? To be offered an intimate relationship with God through Christ our Lord. You know, I can know God. You can know God. And I hope you do know him. You know, you know him through the wonderful relationship of the Lord Jesus. What a beautiful thing. Look, David's words really point here to the coming of Christ into the world. I know that. That's what this passage is talking about. He's talking about the prophetic that the Lord Jesus is coming. He's going to visit his people. And he did. Yes. He was born of a virgin. He took on body of flesh. And God visited man and dwelt among us. Think of that. I, I can't, that, that blows my mind that he would do it that way. But then I want you to notice. And I said as I close. But this, that was the landing strip. Now we're going to get off the plane. His providence. Verse 5, I'm going to stop. Notice this. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now, I want you all to know something here. This is interesting. He knew that mankind was the desire and the will of God in creation. Man enjoyed this opportunity to commune with God, receiving the favor of God. Because notice, he placed us within an order just below the angels. You ever thought about that? That's what he says. The place is just a little lower than the angels. David was overwhelmed with such favor that God bestowed him and told us that we're a little lower than the angels, but we have dominion over everything that he's created. I want you to think about that. We would all have to admit that God has offered us more blessings than we deserve. Would you agree? There was a man at Greystone Baptist Church. And uh, I, I won't call his name, but, you know, I always try to go. And I try to do it here. It's not always fe feasible. But I try to go and shake people's hand before church. And it was a little easier when you're an assistant, more so than the pastor, trying to greet everybody. But I try but when I was there, it was easier for me to do that. And so I would make sure I'd get around, try to get around to everybody. And, uh, but nonetheless, I, this same man, and you know, early on, I didn't think anything about it. But after, you know, seven and a half years of the same thing, every day I went up to him. I would go up to this gentleman and go to shake his hand. I'd say, how are you doing? So and so. And here's what he said, without fail, without fail. And I mean this, for seven and a half years, without fail, this was his response every time. Better than I deserve. Without fail. He never didn't say that to me. Now, I, I'm going to encourage all of you. That would be a real good thing for you to say. And that would be a real good thing for me to say. It would be even a better thing for us to think. Better than we deserve. See, God's providence. We would all have to admit that God has offered more blessings than we deserve. Who am I? Who am I? Who are you? 
Let's just be honest. I know our greatest struggle is we love ourselves. We, we're full of pride, but really, who am I? The song. I know Brother Nate and others in the church have sung this, but who am I that a king will bleed and die for? You ever let's, let that just grip your heart? Who am I? Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that the God of heaven would recognize and bestow such grace upon? That's what David's thinking. See, I'm going to close. We must all consider the providence of God in redemption revealed here. Here's why. Christ stood with God in heaven. He stood with him in heaven. Christ stood with God in heaven. He was in the, in the absolute presence of the angels. But yet, he enjoyed the worship of angels. He enjoyed the fellowship of his father and the glory associated with heaven. But in order to provide salvation, Christ willingly condescended and came down and became a human for me. Now, I don't know about y'all, but if I was God, I'd have found a different plan. I'm just being honest with you. I'd have said, well, can somebody else pay for that? Can somebody else go down there and, and, and be like the ones I created. But do you understand the Bible says he was tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. Do you know the Lord Jesus cried just like we cried? Do you know he hurt just like we hurt? I'm going to preach a message probably Sunday. I've been doing some study on discouragement and depression. Do you know that Jesus Christ, I'm going to read the verse to you. The Garden of Gethsemane gives great Great in his humanity, because he uses the words. He tells his disciples, the core, to come with him because, and he used a couple words there that really relates that the Lord Jesus Christ in his humanity was as discouraged and as dark as any of us would ever know in his manhood. But here's what's amazing about it. He overcome it. And I'm going to give you the six things that I found that I believe helped him to overcome it. As a man, the Lord Jesus Christ. But I say to you, he came here. Hurt, felt, cried, suffered. Understands. Just like we do. For a God to do that for me. Here's the word. Amazed. I stand amazed. I don't stand deserving. I, I don't feel I'm deserving of it. I stand amazed. And that night or that day when David was penning this psalm, it's the very thing that he felt too. He said, I stand amazed. Who am I? Who art man that thou? That's an amazing God. So tonight, the State of the Union Address, his power, his provision, his providence, his preeminence. Let's keep our eyes on him. I'm going to tell you all what. It's all going to be all right. Y'all know that, right? Now, not everything might turn out like we think it should, but y'all listen to me now. It's all going to be all right. How many of y'all saved tonight? Well, then you're going to be all right. Because last time I checked, I read the last chapter and we win. We win. He wins. And as long as we're with him, we're going to be all right. I should get Mike Wood to just jump up right there and give his little, how he does that. Everything going to be all right. So let's all stand our feet because everything is going to be all right. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. In all the earth. If you're here tonight and you don't know Christ, please, we'll have someone take the Bible and show you how to be saved. How many of you are thankful he's got it under control? Amen. Now look, when you go to bed at night, trust him. You've got to apply this to your life. Now this isn't just a message that's kept you here for an hour. These are truths that will change your life if you'll let it happen. Amen? And it's nothing that we don't already know, but sometimes we just need to be reminded. And renew them in our hearts and minds. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and grace. I pray you'll take this little thought tonight. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name.
and all the earth. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for loving me. Lord, I stand amazed. I'm not worthy of your love. I pray you help me now to, to be thankful for that love, grateful for that love. Lord, I pray you help our folks here tonight, even watching online, to realize that you love them. And you have all things under control. I pray now you'll help us get us home safely, bring us back the next point of time. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. And it's getting hot in here.